Walking faith. He's working on the equipment. I'm just leaning against the pickup truck. And it, the, the, the topic turned out to be the workings of the Holy Spirit. And of course, you know, Roger was extremely sensitive to uh, the, the whispers and the movements of the Spirit. And we got going in this, and then I said this. This was the thing, as near as I can remember. I said, um, I always wanted the gift of healing, but I guess the Lord is not going to give that to me. Now, knowing Roger, guess what happened? He was down behind this hay barn, and his head jerked up, and he was staring straight at me, and there was a little bit of fire in his eyes, and he said, Jim, don't ever say that. Never, ever underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit to do good things in your life. That was the message. And it's, uh, excuse me, uh, that, that one will stick with me. But um, that's the one that embodied him so much for me in all our years of uh, just being in the hayfield, sharing our faith. So if you're part of the uh, farming community, as Roger was his entire life, the word from the hayfield is this, next year, we're all going to make money. <laughs> and if you're part of uh, Roger's family of faith and the Christian community through this church and other, other communities that he loves so much, the word of the hayfield, the word from the hayfield is this, from Roger, never ever underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit to do good things in your life. Thank you, Pastor. Sue's brother, Norb, would like to share with us the first verse of what wondrous love, and then the congregation will join in.
not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. In Jesus' name, amen. Roger Eckert was not only a man after God's own heart. He was a man who I believe fits this psalm to a T. That is, Roger was a man who delighted in the law of the Lord and on his law meditated or pondered, as that word, day and night. Now first, please understand that in this psalm, the word law does not mean the do this, don't do this parts of the Bible, although it clearly means that in other places. Here, law is simply shorthand for the Bible as a whole, for God's word. So to phrase it perhaps a bit clearer, blessed is a man who delights in the word of the Lord and on God's word, on the Bible. He ponders day and night. That was Roger. And because Roger delighted in God's word, Roger went to Bible study every Sunday. Indeed, my Bible study on Sunday mornings. And from what I can gather, maybe one or two other Bible story studies during the week. Because Roger loved to talk Bible. He loved to talk about faith. And of course, he loved to talk about the power of faith and the power of prayer. And so the two of you, Sue and Roger, were faithful, faithfully coming to worship each week, faithfully delighting in the Bible, both here at church as well as at home. But there was one other thing that Roger was faithful about, and that was asking questions. Asking questions. Roger loved to ask questions. And those of you who do attend our study here on Sunday mornings here at RLC know exactly what I'm talking about. Depending on how long the preacher preached that day, we would join in a casual conversation about God and His Word and all things spiritual. And much of the time during that time, during the actual class time, Roger was quiet. Oh, he would share thoughts from time to time, but most of the time you would just simply watch him sitting there, percolating, perhaps. You could tell that he was absorbing, that he was deep in thought, delighting in the law of the Lord. And actually what he was doing was simply priming his pump. <laughs> Just as I was wrapping things up, indeed, sometimes even after the closing prayer, uh, you know, which for most people in the class is a pretty good sign that we're done, right at the end, nine times out of ten, Roger would spring his question. The thing that he had been pondering the entire time, perhaps even the entire week. And this was not typically your average short answer essay. No, these were questions, real questions, questions that made you think. Because that is what Roger had been doing. Roger's rabbit trails, we began to call them. Roger's rabbit trails. And every now and then, Roger's question, every now and then it actually had something to do with what we had talked about in the Bible study. It was amazing. But more often than not, it had to do with what Roger had been working on and dwelling on and pondering the entire week, or as the psalmist put it, and on his word, he meditates day and night. Now let's hear that psalmist one more time. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight his love, his passion, is on the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. Over the past couple of weeks, I've been watching Roger slowly slow down. And oddly enough, even his questions began to slow down. And I often wondered to myself, what made Roger this way? What happened that planted that seed of faith so deeply in his soul? What gave him that powerful reservoir of hope that sustained him for nearly seven years of battling cancer? 
The entire time I've known Roger, he's been fighting this fight. What made Roger love his Lord and love God's Word the way that he did? And of course, I know the, the same things are the things that I see in you, Sue, and I see in his sister, and I see in so many of the family members, his children, and then some of the grandchildren that I know. This passion to know God's Word, but more so this passion to share God's Word, to tell other people about the Lord that he loved. He was never shy in doing that, but I have to ask, what made him that way? Well, maybe, maybe the answer is also to be found in that psalm. The psalmist continues in verse 3. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. Now here again, it's important to understand that what the psalmist is saying and also to understand what he's not, especially when he says he prospers. This is not prosperity as we generally think about prosperity. He was a farmer after all. None of what the psalmist is talking about is either financial, material, or physical. This is definitely not prosperity gospel. No, indeed, it is something far, far more important. Again, hear carefully what the psalmist says. He, this man, who delights in God's word. He's like a tree, a tree that yields its fruit, a tree that's leaves do not wither. And in his fruit bearing, that's where he excels. He prospers, he overflows. In his bearing of spiritual fruit, he excels. And like all bearing of fruit, especially spiritual, he excels most when he gives it away. When he gives that fruit to others. Because the paradoxical truth about spiritual fruit is that the more fruit that gets plucked from the tree of life, the more fruit that is given away to others means the tree will produce more and more. Indeed, spiritually, the tree only bears more fruit when the fruit it already has is given away. Biblically, that's what it means to prosper, to give, to serve, to love as Christ first loved us, and to share that fruit of God's word, God's wealth with others. Now, if I may, I would like to talk to you grandchildren for just a moment. You've all sat at Grandpa's table. You've all eaten of Grandpa's fruit, both physically and spiritually, meaning you've all heard and you've witnessed and you've seen the intensity of Grandpa's spiritual walk with Christ, his love for the Lord, his love for God's Word, his love for the church and the things that we do here at church. This is, in, in many, many ways, your grandpa's true legacy to you. It is his inheritance to you. For you to experience that deep and abiding faith and love in Christ Jesus that Roger experienced for so many years, that's what he really wants for you to experience, for you to live, for you to know. The same thing that he knew and lived for so many years. To be that tree rooted deeply in the faith, and thus, that tree that bears much fruit. So, of course, today it's natural for us to ask why. I mean, why now? I mean, Grandpa Roger really, he really wasn't that old. He could have had many, many years, we think. And he was so important to so many people. He was, he was that glue in many ways. Uh, I saw it at Good Shepherd. I saw it here in our congregation, and I saw it in your family. He was that person who held other people together. He had a ministry going at the Good Shepherd Nursing Home. It wasn't just about being a maintenance guy, although he did that incredible, incredibly well, and they miss him dearly there. 
he had a ministry to all those old people, and they miss him greatly as well. So again, we, we have to stop and pause, and we have to ask that question, why? Why now? Honestly, I don't know. But I do know a little bit about that question itself when we ask that question, why? That is the fact that we are likely asking the question in the wrong direction. The why isn't why now, but rather, why didn't God take Roger four or five or six years ago when all of this started? If you understand the diagnosis that he was initially given, and if you understand the shape of the cancer during that first year, you truly would marvel at the fact that he went as long as he did. Now, Roger believed that it was a miracle. It was a miracle of faith. It was a miracle of healing. And we talked about that a lot. It's one of his questions he brought up from time to time. And again, that may very well be. Honestly, I, I really don't know. But I do know that God doesn't do anything he does without a reason. And the reason for these extra few years this time between his original cancer diagnosis and today, I believe, wasn't for Roger. It was probably not to bless Roger. Now hang with me here. I'm going to explain that. No, God didn't give Roger extra time, bonus years, is that what he called Bonus days. Bonus days. God didn't give Roger bonus days on earth just so that he could shower an extra blessing on him. Or because Roger somehow deserved it because of the life that he was living. Or, and this is the one that we usually go with, well, he needed extra time to get ready. And, nah, no, no, he didn't. Roger's always been ready. Now, Roger's faith has been rock solid the entire time through. He was ready to go when God was ready to take him. Just as he was ready to go five or six years ago. Uh, yeah, that doesn't mean he didn't have questions. That means he didn't have, you know, those fears and anxieties that everyone has at a time like that. But he knew his Lord, and he knew that his Lord was strong and kind and good, as we sing, and that Jesus would take him home one day. Now, I suspect that this gift of time that Roger was given, this extra time between his original diagnosis and today was for you. One of you. Again, I believe that God didn't grant Roger extra time because he needed it to get ready, but maybe one of you needed that time with him to get ready. And you needed that extra moment or day or hour, whatever it was, to spend some time with your father and grandfather. For something that was said between the two of you, and we may never know exactly what it is. But you see, that's kind of the way that that Holy Spirit works. And we talked about the Holy Spirit time after time after time. The Holy Spirit does what He wills, and it's a God thing. And sometimes we know, and sometimes we don't. But the Holy Spirit plants seeds. The Holy Spirit empowers us to speak the truth in love. The Holy Spirit plows the soul, soil. He makes the path straight. And he did a lot of that through his servant, Roger. And Roger was given that time to do that with you. And that is a blessing. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, or stands in the way of sinners, or sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. And so we thank the Lord for the life of this man, for the blessing he was as he walked among us, for his deep and sincere delight in the word of God, and his deep and sincere love for his family, for all of you. Blessed is the man, in Jesus' name. Amen. We join together in singing a hymn of comfort, How Great Thou Art.
stand for prayer? Let us pray. Almighty God, you have called your chosen people together into one holy body. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Grant that all who have been called into your kingdom by baptism into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and that through the gate of death and the grave we may pass with him to our joyful resurrection. Yes, Lord. Give to all who mourn a sure confidence in your loving care, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Yes, Lord. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to continue and listen to your calling and follow you. Yes, Lord. Hear us, O Lord, as we pray together the prayer your Son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. family would like to share their thanks for the many flowers, memorials, and other acts of kindness that have been demonstrated to them at this time. We would also like to invite all of you present to join with them in a fellowship luncheon. That luncheon will take place immediately following this service in our fellowship hall in the basement. The committal service will be at 2 o'clock at Rushford Lutheran Cemetery. With that in mind, let us go to our Lord with a closing prayer and a dinner prayer. God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to call us to faith and give us new life. We give you thanks that by his death, he destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection, opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Bless our time together with fellowship and food. May this refreshment strengthen our bodies for the work of your kingdom. And may our time together be one of joy and remembrance for those whom you have now called to rest. Strengthen us in the confidence that because Jesus lives, we shall live also. And that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. In your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Roger Eckert. Acknowledge, we pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. We remain standing for the family processional as we join in singing. 